Silver Beat, especially rainbow chard, is in my top 10 favorite things to grow in the vegetable patch. For one thing, it is incredibly easy and hardy plant to grow. And if you do choose the colored rainbow chard stalks, they look beautiful in a vegetable patch or in amongst flowers. For a garden like mine that's in semi-shade, Silver Beet is brilliant because I think it grows very well in semi-shade. If you keep the moisture up, you can grow Silver Beet in full sun and I've grown it in almost full shade. So it's also very light tolerant. I tend to plant seedlings in and around the garden where I have space. I'll often use pots or a direct sow with seeds into soil if I've got a big space. I've moved the chickens to the back of my house and round the front I've got a bit of open space. Last year I planted a whole lot of grass in there and it, it just didn't get time to get established and when I moved the chickens back in they managed to eat the grass in a few weeks. So what I'm hoping to do this time is I'm planting a whole lot of older seeds that I have. You, if you're gardening from seeds, you often end up with buckets of half packets everywhere. And so I have planted all my old half packets of seeds, things that are suitable for planting in autumn, but also many of these are suitable for planting all year round. So I just spread them around. I had to break up the soil. As you can see, the soil is very hard and compacted, and that's from just a lot of traffic of chickens all day, every day, scratching and walking on it. And it looks looks dry and it's dry because there's a very big tree that's sucking all the juice out of the soil <laughs> and so there will be some hand watering on my part to keep it moist. Silver beet likes a nice moist soil so when you're maintaining your silver beet just keep it well watered. Well at first this space was just going to be green manure with edibles that the chickens could um, eat later on when it got bigger. But then as the seedlings started to come up, I did get very excited. I'm looking forward to harvesting some of this for myself as well. And I also decided to put in some seedlings of silver beet because I wanted it to look beautiful. So pests, let's just start with, you know, slugs and snails will obviously have a good munch on silver beet. Birds will have a peck at it. And also rats and other little creatures crawling around in the night will have a munch. I do protect silver beet with glass jars when they're young and I find once they're at a decent height, they're self-sufficient. It's best to succession plant silver beet by seed. You can buy silver beet seedlings quite readily and that's fine too. But for somebody like me who gets through a lot because I'm also cooking a lot with it and sharing it with chickens, I tend to use my own seeds and I succession plant about every four weeks. But if you put seeds with a bit of soil into a seed tray, you will have in a couple of weeks the seedlings that you are paying a lot more for. So it's very cost effective plant. Each seed is usually pretty high germination factor. For cool climates where you get a fair bit of frost in winter and spring mornings, it's best to propagate the seeds indoors and get them to about seven centimetres and then bring them out. That crucial young seedling period needs a bit of molly coddling in the frost but apart from that they'll grow all through winter. Once silver beet is established it's indestructible except if you have chickens but I often can't grow up fast enough because the chickens can demolish a full silver beet plant in about a day and you know they'll though they can go for it. The advantage is you get a better egg from your chicken if they have that lovely green produce Fertilizer, well for me, because I tend to rotate my plants and I've got chickens, a little bit of well composted chook poo is, is great for preparing the bed for silver beet. Seaweed and worm juice is very nice if you need to boost it up. I tend to not do any of that for silver beet. It's one of those plant it and let it go. Companions of silver beet include coriander. They're good beneficial insect detractors. Many gardeners plant sage around their brassicas, cabbage, silver beet, as it's supposed to deflect the white cabbage moth. You can start harvesting silver beet around the six week period. You start by taking the leaves off on the outside and it actually stimulates more leaf growth. So it's beneficial to keep harvesting your leaves. Avoid taking the leaves from the middle. Although I have done that at times when I'm after the tiny new growth and included in a, a garden salad, The color, especially if you have rainbow chard where the color is 
you know, yellows and reds and pinks amongst the green in your salad. It's very lovely. You harvest with a kind of pulling twist motion and yes, it's best to take off from the outside of the plant. If you get flower stalks appearing and sometimes that can happen in really hot weather, take them out because it can prolong um, more leaf growth uh, sometimes. Sometimes the flower becomes inevitable. <sighs> A lot of people talk about bad childhood memories of silver beet or spinach overcooked and I don't know being forced to eat it but I think it's an adult flavor and an acquired taste and I consider it comfort food. A Friday evening when you're at home stir fried with some onion and garlic and a bit of chili and rice or accompanying a roast lamb or and potatoes that kind of combination but I also make a delicious silver beet soup which is very green and very healthy and it's lovely so it involves a couple of potatoes some onion and garlic about 250 grams of silver beet about 400 grams of water and and in that some stock and you mince the onion and garlic together and I don't even fry it. I then just cut the potatoes up and cook it in about a hundred, boil it up in a hundred grams of the stock. Add the silver beet for another five minutes of cooking at the end. I use a thermomix, you whiz it so that it becomes smooth and add the parmesan and cream at the end. The cream is optional. You can add a hundred grams of cream and it's delicious. It's a very healthy soup. Well, thank you so much for watching this episode. I do think my um, outdoor space here is going to require a little more replanting than I expected. Uh, there was some overnight munching. At first I thought I was going to uh, have to thin out some of the seeds, but I think nature is taking that path and I'll probably just look towards reseeding some areas that have been particularly snaffled. But anyway, th thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the subscriptions and I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye. cicadas the noises cicadas i don't know how this sound is going to go with the cicadas and you can plant you can plant you can also plant oh goodness me cockatoos